Welcome to the Q4 FY19 conference call. Uh, I'm sure uh, you've uh, got the, the press release, the JV results, details, and also the presentation that we have forwarded or uploaded. Uh, we would like to highlight that the, the, the last quarter, like the previous quarters registered, continued to register very high availability of the test. So much so that incentive linked to such a test was availed of. And during the year, the company earned a total incentive of about 48 crores. In addition to that, the Rani Electricity Mumbai Limited started now contributing its own might to the ATM. We have set in motion two clear paths in AEM. Uh, one is related to making sure that the ATM losses reach a benchmark level. And the other parallel path is in terms of ensuring that the customer is able to reap advantage both on account of network services as also on account of the software services. I must caveat it by saying there were lots of gaps as the incumbent couldn't carry out several capex and schemes which were identified long back by the team. We have taken up all of those in the right earnestness. Those who are familiar with Mumbai must be aware that from April to October is the highest period when you actually can't do any digging works and therefore many of those schemes will actually take off on ground from October onwards. The AT&T Lost levels last year resisted for 7.85 percent, uh, down from 8.6 percent or so. Besides that, a number of technological initiatives have been set into motion, as also a number of areas which were not catered in terms of electric supply to them have also been integrated based on the approvals that we either managed to get out of the courts or out of the municipal bodies locally. This would contribute to the loss reduction because no one goes without electricity. It was assumed that those people were availing electricity albeit without meters. In addition to that, uh, we have been able to add a lot of within units from the larger customers which have moved over to Adani electricity network and this pattern continues. We've also been legally benefited by recent capital orders where such uh, addition of customer will continue to give us uh, the benefit. So when those were some of the initial points, besides that, you are of course aware of the fact that uh, the results of a Dani electricity are just for about seven months period. In addition, the other news that we have shared with you during the past two, that all the ongoing assets that were slated to be commissioned have been commissioned, barring uh, just one small element that left out due to some coordination work. Uh, in, beyond that, the CapEx stream continues to be healthy. We have close to about 37, 50 crores worth of transmission orders already in hand, which have to be executed within this year and the next. In addition, we have a strong CapEx of close to about 1400 plus crore from AEML that we have to execute within the current year. So, so that's 
the overall picture. Uh, we will look forward to your questions and would appreciate uh, if you could send your your questions. This is the inputs or the asked results. Uh, we will we will be happy to answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants request a youth answer while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question is assembled. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from IDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, sir, congratulations, sir, on completing a number of projects in FY19 and, uh, and earning an incentive. Sir, I. Uh, uh, can you please confirm the incentive number for all these projects which get completed ahead of time? Is it for a 48 crore? Sorry? Uh, can you uh, confirm the incentive number? Yes, sir. Sorry, I got your point. But the incentive is not for completion of projects. The incentive okay. is for the availability. So okay. the okay. operational already. We have been Benefit of all 
uh, analyst friends on the call. When it comes to distribution business, the upsides are in terms of the large capex uh, pipeline that we have for the simple reason that it had uh, virtually got dried up in the last four to five years as the incumbent had challenges of capital formation. So uh, there's a big pipeline of uh, capital outlay that uh, we see in front of us as, as far as distribution business is concerned. Number two, uh, we have advantage in terms of normative point and cost versus the point and cost that we have to incur. Uh, that is another aspect that we clearly uh, have with us. The third is in terms of the uh, the upside on the par cost that we are able to sort of reduce. One of our big upsides in the last few quarters was that we have been able to bring down the cost of input power uh, by student um, sort of use of our own trading knowledge and trading equipment. So that, that's been one of the key factors of, in fact, uh, better performance during the last one or two quarters. So that also gives us eventual upside in terms of the fact that we can therefore garner more million units by virtue of more customers shifting to our network. So, so those are all uh, associated aspects that we are working on. And of course, uh, the other upside is in terms of the financing because that's also a normative basis. And compared to that, uh, we have been able to get uh, a double A plus rating and we are looking at therefore options of uh, how we are able to manage uh, better cost of capital or our uh, AEMS business as well. So those are some of the salient aspects and of course uh, in going forward we will also look at the options in terms of seeing as to how we can uh, look at the embedded real estate uh, value which which, uh, uh, which also stores a good advantage for, for AEMS. Uh, and of course for shareholders. So last question, what is the capital outlay for the distribution for the next few years? Well, uh, the capital outlay is more by virtue of what we can execute, not necessarily by virtue of the pipeline that exists. In fact, uh, as I told you that because of the fact that in the past, uh, capex couldn't be executed for various reasons, and now uh, there is, in fact, a pressure from the regulator side as well for us to execute more capex than perhaps we can manage. Uh, therefore, the outlay generally each year outlay will be close to about 1250 to 1500 crores uh, going forward for next few years. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayur. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Varun Ahuja from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, good, af <clears throat> good, uh, good evening, uh, gentlemen, and thanks so much uh, for the opportunity. A um, couple of Varun, we lost you. Uh, hello, Mr. Ahuja. Hello. Hello. I guess his line snap looks like. Uh, so he's still connected. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have lost the audio from the current participant. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Machal from Motila Lothal Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, on slide 22, the bid-up bridge for the distribution company, uh, there is a drag item you show because of carrying costs on regulatory assets. So isn't this uh, a pass-through in your tariffs or you get a, you suffer a hit because of it? No, no. So as a conservative accounting policy, you know, we have not recognized the carrying cost on the income which is going to be received by us. So it's while uh, you know the seller company used to uh, account for uh, the carrying costs in the in the balance sheet, but as the program norms, we have decided that.
that we shall recognize that as and when we shall receive it. Okay, but uh, as per policy or as per the regulations, you are due to your, uh, I mean, bound, you are uh, li likely to receive it, right? Yes, yes, yes. As per, uh, we are entitled as per the policy to receive the caring cost. Uh, so our numbers, current numbers are understated by that amount on a regular, uh, normative, on a normative basis or a reported basis. I mean, there is a drag of that amount. Yes, yeah, that's true. Okay. And so secondly, you mentioned about 30,000 crores of order in transmission. Can you please throw some light on uh, how do you see that coming over in FI 20 and 21? I mean, uh, when do you see the bidding happening for these projects? You know, as I mentioned, that both as both central, that is federal projects as well as the provincial projects, which are state projects, both have suddenly started to queue up. Uh, it could have been because of the fact that uh, the Empowered Committee on Transmission eventually has taken a call that even projects like uh, Green Corridor would be done through PVCB routes uh, or else it could have been uh, more clarity that was led by regulators in respective states that they would want to see the projects coming through DVTV route. Uh, all of that community uh, perhaps has brought this uh, queue to become uh, longer. Now, uh, the amount that has to be spent on the transmission assets to be built is, of course, pretty huge. For so what? It is important for us to look at is the fact that if they can all be rhythmically placed by the NCT, and we have therefore gone and talked to the players who sit at the National, uh, National Committee on Transmission to space them appropriately so that uh, one is able to do a decent job in terms of service and then participate in the bidding. Otherwise, it becomes very challenging if they all get clustered together because then you would rather have to do a very hurried job in terms of estimating the routes, validating those uh, aspects and then uh, preparing the, uh, the bill of uh, quantities as also finally pitching. So my sense is close to about 30 to 40,000 crore is, is, is fine for every year depending on the kind of players that exist and uh, because I'm assuming the target naturally is poised to take uh, uh, a large share of that uh, because that's their capability and also the fact that that's what they would like to see. But there is enough and more that the private sector can also uh, then look at from their share. So to me, uh, 30 to 40 thousand crore per annum would be a very decent number and I don't see any problem with regard to those many projects coming through. Sure, sir. So just one clarification uh, on the committee reports, which you uh, I had referred to the committee reports, the merits of the committee reports. Uh, I see existingly they have approved projects worth about 16, 17,000 crores. So the 30,000 crores, uh, you include the projects which are likely to come soon, I mean which are under the con committee's consideration. You are bang on. Those are national committees for transmission that you have looked at for the federal projects. I yes, mm -hmm. yes, including some of the green corridors. But I'm talking about state projects included because there are today yeah. projects from UP, there are projects today from uh, Jharkhand, there are projects from MP, uh, there are projects from uh, uh, Karnataka, all of those projects are all lining up. So, so I'm not only including the MCT projects, which are federal, but I'm also including the state projects. So, uh, okay, okay, got it. And sir, is the, uh, just to understand the market, is the bidding uh, structure or the players uh, very different in your central projects, which I believe are typically more, uh, are larger, versus the state projects? Not really. In fact, uh, the project that we have recently won, for example, the Dhatampur project or Cobra E project, they are as big as large as ISCS project. In fact, the Bhagavad project is 1850 crores. And the Obra project is 720 crores. So it, it's not it's not so. It just depends what what way the state wishes to execute its transmission system. Are they combining 
multiple lines that they need to strengthen or add. And now, UP has exactly done that. Action is exactly doing the same thing. Some of the others also taking clue from there and trying to create bigger packages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, sir. And so, this last thing uh, of the, th the thirty thousand which you mentioned per uh, per annum, effectively, I should broadly assume fifty percent from central and fifty percent from state. Yeah, you can assume so. Though of course, there is no hard hard and fast. Yeah, food. broadly, uh, looking at how the trend currently is, sixteen, seventeen thousand by the central. That way. Thirty, you can assume so. Now, for example, we can see even Maharashtra has come out with a project that. Uh, any artist was cancelled out of one of the private sector parties. And uh, that has been recently sorted, last, last I think 10 days back. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so that's again a 400 TV uh, transmission project that has been floated by Maharashtra to the mm -hmm. Got it, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Modi from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, just a quick question on uh, your views on the competitive intensity um, in the bidding space currently. Uh, how are you seeing? Are you seeing lower number of players, new number of uh, players coming in, or how, how is it? And, uh, you know, uh, whether it is leading to any easing out of the bidding because what we've seen historically is that some bids were almost nearing, or in some cases, probably less than cost of capital. So, do you see that trend overall in the bidding scenario? How how do you see it? So, Rahul, uh, I would say that the competitive intensity is the same as what it has been. Uh, we still have those players who were pitching and bidding earlier still around. Now, eventually, in terms of uh, capability to execute, we have seen that uh, the players who, who were grabbing a large share continue to still be the same. So, I don't see any change that's happened except for the fact that it seems like uh, some of the EPC players which at some stage came into the development arena. Uh, perhaps may not be there uh, because they have told us that they are happy doing EPC jobs uh, for us. Uh, so that's, that's what is the indication, but I can't vote for that part. We'll have to wait and see in the next round uh, that's due. Uh, I can only tell you that uh, two days back, in fact yesterday, there was a bid opening for one of the projects, uh, which is an ISPS project which is uh, called the Western Region, Northern Region Spending Project. And I find there are only two bidders. Okay. Uh, fair point. Uh, so that, that's very helpful. Uh, so secondly, uh, sir, in the, uh, what we've seen in the uh, renewable space, like you've got uh, more uh, bids coming up through nodal agencies. Uh, who take up, you know, the payment risk. Uh, now, in this case, obviously, you've got uh, the CTU which does the collection or we may say Pargrid who does the collection, but you see, uh, you know, a nodal agency's uh, presence coming in uh, in terms of payment security. Now, those who understand the sector know very well that this industry is No, not really, but just uh, your views that uh, typically they don't default in generation also. But no, they do. They do. I mean, they, the fact is that wherever they find that the uh, variable cost is not part of the merit order, and they won't really therefore want that genetic station to really have claims from there, uh, they would merely delay the claim because the generator needs the discount. The discount doesn't need the generator. Whereas it is quite quite the reverse as far as transmission systems is concerned because no state would ever take risk in delaying the payment or not making the payment for transmission because one baker opening would mean a, a big problem for the state. So I have never seen even states with sort of poorer reputation 
ever denying payment to the transmission companies. So my sense is, while the pool arrangement will continue, whether our grid becomes the no-bill density for federal projects or an automatic arrangement is evolved by the regulator, that's for the policy makers to decide. But as of now, that continues. So as far as federal projects are concerned, our grid will be the collection uh, partner. And the pool arrangement, of course, is similar when it comes to ISDS projects or federal projects or state projects. And pool system is pretty effective. That's not going to change. Right, right. Great. And just lastly, sir, on the way forward for the distribution company, sir, what do you see the opportunity size like, uh, both in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the, the license circle areas and the distribution franchises, and how do you uh, see Adani transmission placement segment going forward? Uh, thanks, Rahul, for that question. Uh, the way forward is Transmission <clears throat> grabbed the Mumbai opportunity was for the fact that it is very keen to expand in the distribution business. So, of course, without saying that all future opportunities will, will sort of see our response. Coming to your first part of the question, which is uh, how do I see opportunities standing out? in future for the distribution business, my limited answer is that whichever, whichever column I read, whichever paper you, you sort of pursue now, you find that one of the key agendas for the new government is going to be reforms at the distribution level. And I therefore personally feel that quite like transmission where now you see a queue of projects, uh, in sooner times you might see uh, a few of opportunities in the distribution as well. The more important part, whether it will be through PPP route or franchisee route, as long as the franchisee has the qualification requirements where serious players are invited to participate, I guess we will see very healthy competition and be very useful to get in into those. I don't see much difference between the current franchising model, especially what one saw in, uh, in Rajasthan. The last ones were, of course, at that time we were not in this business, but I was in the other company and from where we did get one of the franchising uh, areas. It has almost everything similar to a PPP model except that it is title franchising perhaps for it to be politically correct. So, so we will finally have to wait and see but I certainly want to summarize by saying I personally see that distribution reforms will be a big ticket item in the new government's agenda. Yes, thank you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Varun Ahuja from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Sorry for uh, earlier my line got disconnected. Um, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, you answered this, uh, so apologies if, if I'm repeating the uh, question, so, but I'll limit it to two. Uh, firstly, on CAPEX plans, uh, uh, did I hear it right last time that uh, you, you're guiding for 12, uh, 1250 to 1500 crore uh, for the CAPEX, and I presume this is more of organic and, and not really including any uh, opportunistic m and targets? So, uh, welcome back. Uh, we certainly lost you. And so, I'm just trying to reconnect what figures that you're talking about are the figures that I set for Adani Electricity Mumbai. That's the figure that I said is their uh, organic capex level. As far as the capex for Adani transmission is concerned, uh, that's actually much higher than that. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, you are aware of the fact that we have an internal resource generation uh, which can sustain 
uh, with total capital outlay of close to about 4,500 to 5,000 crores every year. After, mm -hmm. after taking care of our debt obligation as well as our obligation with regard to the interest in. So, so therefore, right. uh, I think that's the kind of capex that we will execute uh, every year as we, as we move ahead. Sure. Uh, and uh, the second part is, uh, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, you've uh, you've uh, resolved the uh, ratings from S&P's perspective at least, so congratulations on that. Uh, I think uh, you've very clearly walked the talk as you've been committed. Um, so just on Moody's, I guess that's the only one which is left on negative outlook. Uh, you know, if you can give any update on, on, on your conversations with them, I presume the equity raise uh, that, uh, that, you know, the QIP that you've been trying for different reasons, obviously it couldn't happen, uh, but that would be clearly one of the triggers. So if you could, if you guide where you are uh, on that as well, given that you, you seem to have quite a number of, you know, growth opportunities, which obviously equity investors would like. Yeah. So, uh, again, um, you know, we don't actually have to receive any compliments for what we ought to have done. So we, we just restored what we were supposed to do. Uh, as far as uh, moving is concerned, it's, uh, their requirement is in terms of the uh, equity issuance, which again we are committed except for the fact that all of you are aware of the events that happened one after the other in the country. So now that the elections are over, uh, new government formation is on the corner, we're clearly moving ahead and setting up our efforts uh, for, the, for, for the purpose that uh, we went about doing few things in the month of uh, January. So, yes, uh, we committed, and I'm sure uh, uh, Moody appreciates that aspect. And the moment uh, the equity issuance part is done, everything else will then streamline back to what, what way we want to see it. Right. And just one last thing, if I may squeeze in, um, in terms of, uh, I see that you have, uh, I think, around uh, a few bonds, uh, local uh, domestic INR bonds, which are maturing in the next couple of months. So if you could give a color, how do you see the, uh, you know, local market liquidity uh, in order to refinance that or uh, whether you're looking to do it through the uh, bank loan market? So it's a, it's a guidance. I don't want to talk uh, about specifics. Uh, and we express it in terms of uh, those issues which are likely, but yes, we we have sized up those issues, and uh, uh, we we have all those options sort of linked up as far as our actions on those are concerned. So, so we will certainly share with you. And I've already mentioned to you that we have a healthy uh, free cash flow with us, especially now that uh, we have those. Uh, ongoing projects having been completed because even they are building now this year is going to be uh, entirely uh, in further improvement in the cash flow. So, so one doesn't have to really worry about that except to take it its own stride and, and, uh, and deal with the issue. Okay. All right. That's, that's all from me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that today's presentation is uploaded on our website, that is Adani Transmission Limited. Please refer to the website for the presentation. We'll move on to the next question, that is from the line of Mohit Kumar from IDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity once again, sir. Uh, sir, are you open to, you know, acquiring distribution, operational distribution franchisee assets? Yes. Have you looked at this? Yes, ma'am. Well, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, second, sir. Uh, uh, first, I want to add that, you know, whatever the capex, organic or inorganic, we want to ensure that whatever is within the parameters of free cash flow available, either through the fresh equity issuance, we will ensure that, that we will maintain the investment grade rating. So that's the first commitment which we have and we have assured to the bondholders. Uh, so within that parameter, either organic or inorganic, both options are open for us. Across
launch transmission and distribution franchise. I guess uh, so some of the distribution franchise assets are available in the market. That's the reason I was I asked. So we share when uh, you know some sure, of sure, sure. jumps, uh, but uh, you know as of now we do not comment on speculation. Sure, sure. So the reason the uh, accounting, uh, so what are the accounting changes you have made which are led to restatement of profit for Q2 F for Q3 FY19? Can you please stop. So, so it's a good question. Actually, what has happened is that we in Adani Electricity Mumbai, if you recollect that we have a 25-year EPA with Vidarbha uh, power. So as per the accounting standard, uh, you know, earlier we have been told that since this is a, uh, uh, this is a specific PPA with Adani Electricity Mumbai, uh, we have to account it as a lead. So uh, we have accounted in the initial two quarters as a lead uh, obligation, but then we have taken some opinions and uh, based on that opinion, because we were strongly believing that, uh, you know, because they were related party between the Reliance Infra and uh, Vidarbha, but we as an independent entity do not have an obligation and there are some technical things which were supporting us, uh, you know, that not to account it as a lead. So that's why, you know, regrouping has happened. Uh, so. Uh, in earlier two quarters, you might have seen that uh, uh, we have accounted as a lease obligation for this reserve. And in the March, when the final view of the auditor has been taken by Deloitte, uh, they have agreed that uh, no treatment of lease is required. I hope I have answered you. Is there anything else, sir? On the regulatory no, asset? On the carrying cost? No, no, nothing. Nothing. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. A reminder to the participants in the conference, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. If there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anil Sardana for his closing comments. Thank you, friends. Thank you to all the analysts, uh, friends, for joining the Q4 uh, conference call. Uh, uh, this is not the end of... Uh, such engagement. If you have any questions, feel free to send it to Ashwin or to Jay and we will be happy to respond to your query. We now look forward for all of you to join us for Q1 FY20 call. Till then, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Adani Transmission Limited, that concludes this conference.